What's happening everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So in case you missed it, last week I did a physical overview and lens test of this awesome 28 millimeter T2.2 1.8 X anamorphic prime in RF mount. We chatted about that barrel design, popped it on the red Komodo, as you can see here. We shot it at some charts, did a more characteristic test. It was awesome. You had to be there. But this week, we're gonna be doing all that same stuff with the 40 millimeter from this set, the T2 1.8 X Vazen Anamorphic Prime. So it's gonna be awesome, but don't worry, I made sure to save the best for last. For next week's video, we're going to be doing all these same tests, but for my favorite focal length in this set, the 65 millimeter. So stay tuned next week for that. This week, we're talking about this 40 millimeter. So I do have two quick notes about like this set as a whole. One, the jump in size going from this 28 to these two lenses is massive. These two lenses fit the much more standard like form factor of a large cine anamorphic lens with this like huge barrel. And this, which is still kind of comparable on paper is just like way smaller and pretty much like the size of like a photo lens, which is fine, but that can be kind of weird for like the cohesiveness of these lenses when you use them as a set. Another thing, and I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on this because this actually doesn't matter. Why are the design on this 40 and 65 millimeters so different? It's like they came from different manufacturing lines. The font and sizing and spacing and everything between these two are just like so much different. The 40 and 28 millimeter match pretty well. This 65 is just kind of like the oddball out with like different numbering and fonts and sizing and everything. What, like, what is up with that? Anyways, it's about six and three quarter inches long off the camera body, about seven inches if you count the bayonet. And this wide part of the barrel up here is about four and a quarter inches long, about 110 centimeters. Although the front lip of the barrel dips down a bit here to bring it down to the much more standard 95 millimeter front barrel diameter. And oddly enough, the 40 millimeter does not have a front thread available. Although I can kind of see that it like does have one, but it's being taken up by like this front glass element. I'm not really sure with that. What's really weird is the 65 millimeter does have it and they're very similar like lens barrel designs. It's totally accessible right here. My point being is why are these two lenses so different? The 40 millimeter weighs just under four pounds. So yeah, this is a beefy lens for sure. As for the design of this barrel, there's definite similarities between the 40 and 65 millimeter. The real difference kind of is going to be up towards this flange where there's quite a bit more space between the mount and the aperture ring on the 65. Anyways, it's that iris ring and then a decent bit of empty space here and then a little step up in diameter and then we get the focus ring where the geared ring is on this lower part and the rest of the housing next to it just like gets bigger. But then you look on the right side of the lens and there's this little window cut out to reveal these same measurements, but now right side up so people on both sides of the lens can see the focus point. Next, the barrel really just flattens out after this to a really straight, flat shape, right until that last half inch or so where it drops down to that 95 millimeter diameter. Skipping right over quickly to the rear element of this lens, that exit pupil is housed nicely in this thick black ring. And as far as I can tell, this is not a focusing group. So when you rack focus, this rear group does not move at all. Speaking of racking focus, this focus ring takes a 300 degree rotation from minimum to infinity. Same with the 65 and both of their iris rings take a 90 degree turn along their full range. So pretty standard cine lens conformity there. And that is pretty much the quick and dirty for the the build of this lens. They are pretty simple lenses, no electronic stuff in there to talk about. With all that out of the way, let's talk about some optical stuff going on in these lenses, and then we're gonna talk about image coverage. So as we know, these Vazen anamorphics are 1.8X stretch factor lenses, which coming from a four by three sized imager is the stretch ratio that produces an image for the 2.39 by one widescreen format. And aside from what I think is just a clear protective front element there, this 40 millimeter has a front anamorphic design, meaning those cylindrical elements are at the front grouping of elements. As for the diaphragm of this lens, it's made up of 10 aperture blades that allow it to stop down to F16, and of course stop up to T2. 
too. And it seems the lens's diaphragm is about right here at this area in the lens barrel. And also, as I'm sure you could see maybe from that footage earlier, but these bays and anamorphics are very sufficiently coated on the inside. The set I have right now is the blue flare vase and anamorphic set. Although in researching all this stuff about these lenses, I found out Vazen makes a version of each one of these focal lengths in an amber flare version, which I would be super curious to do like just a flare test between these and that set. And by my measurement, the minimum focus distance on this 40 millimeter is about 24 and a half inches. And I measure from the front element, which I think makes the most sense. And this distance is pretty impressive actually. A lot of fast anamorphic lenses don't often focus too close. So I'll absolutely take two feet. All right, so as promised, let's talk about the coverage of this 45 millimeter lens. And if you remember last week, the 28 millimeter ran into some pretty ugly vignetting problems even when we followed the shooting instructions given by Vazen for the red Komodo. So I definitely think it's necessary to do a little bit of hashing out on what this 40 millimeter is going to be able to cover and not. Although as you creep up the focal lengths, that vignetting and coverage issue is going to become less of a problem. So right from the 40 millimeters product page, they say, for the RF version, the lens is able to cover the full sensor height of the RED Komodo and C70, delivering a vignette-free image after 1.8x de-squeeze. They don't specify that it has to be in the 4x3 1.8x mode on the Komodo like they do on the 28mm page, which absolutely still applies. So just out of curiosity, I shot this 40mm in both the 3x2 and 4x3 1.8x 6K anamorphic modes the Komodo offers. And I just like pointed it at a blank wall here so we can see where that coverage falls off. So here in 4x3 at wide open T2, there is no vignette and I'm focused to infinity by the way, which is going to reveal vignetting the most. When I get to T4, some very small vignetting is creeping in now. And a T5.6 is where I would consider that vignetting to be a problem. And also this reveals that this illumination circle is actually a little bit off center. So that's kind of concerning. Stopped all the way down here, this vignette is getting really strong. Though I am focused to infinity and although changing focus all the way might be more forgiving, close focus really only improves this a little bit. And as expected right off the bat in the three by two test at wide open T2, you already get a pretty harsh vignette to show up if you focus to infinity. As you stop down further and further, of course, towards F8, it's starting to vignette so much. It's literally just connecting at the corners and coming like a circle. So obviously 4x3 is the correct mode for this lens on the Red Komodo, but it's not vignette free as they claim. So with all that out of the way, let's check out some video tests taken on this 40 millimeter. And if you remember last week on the 28 millimeter, I actually did this test in the three by two 1.8 X anamorphic mode from the Komodo, even though that is actually improper, you should do it in the four by three. But this way we actually get to see the maximum amount of the lens illumination. But I will add some markers here to remind you of the four by three area. So I'm going to do one test while wide open at T2 and then another test at T5.6 to see how that calms things down a little bit if it does at all. And as for this test, I have my epically bearded friend Kyle sitting in for me like he does so good. He's at four feet from the front element of the lens. I also have a film canister at the close focus point, roughly two feet off the front element. A Felix P360 light in the background for a very small yet bright source to give us a lens flare. And then right on the backdrop up top there is a small set of string lights. And then finally, I just connected this long piece of like golden shiny garland from the light in the back all the way to behind the lens. So basically it's whole focus range. Wide open, close focus near the edge looks pretty acceptably sharp, which I was not really expecting. That's great. Keep an eye on this though when I focus in and out of it and you'll for sure notice some lens breathing going on as we get towards the backdrop. But all things said, 
it's pretty well maintained. And I'm pretty impressed by its sharpness at T2. And at this aperture, the separation and focus fall off you get is really lovely. And as I pan here, make sure you check out how Kyle's head gets stretched out and warped towards the edges of the frame. It's pronounced for sure, but as long as it's maintained within pretty much the middle, like third of the image generously, I'm mostly okay with that. So I'm gonna do that same pan, but at close focus. And this is a good chance to watch how those bokehs change shape as they travel within the frame. And it does that little oval like bloom lens flare when the source is just outside of frame, which I love. And this doesn't happen outside of being wide open. That's a T2 trait. And also that quintessential blue streak from that Felix light that's supposed to be there seems to be really greatly reduced here at T2. At T5.6, however, we for sure get that strong blue streak back. It's just more like intense. And also, of course, things are looking just a whole lot sharper. Depth of field is a whole lot greater too. And everything was nice and sharp at T2. So I really don't have much to say other than everything is just much sharper now. Getting towards the backdrop and infinity focus, watch as that vignetting grows and grows, especially in this corner here, you can really tell. Because this area also tends to catch more more lens flares and glares too. Distortion isn't really going to change at all from T2 to 5.6, but this is a good showcase of how sharp this lens is, even when Kyle's face is like halfway out of the frame all the way to the edge there, so pretty good. And now I'll do this pan again, but at close focus. And now's a good time to check out those lens flares and out of focus area again. So I'm liking that those bokehs look nice and full at the center of the image, but of course they warp around a bit as I pan over and get pretty small at the corner. And as we come back, we get that blue streak back at T5.6. Like I said, it's much stronger here. And also we're going to see this little like triple orb reflection from that hard light travel opposite that source in the frame. All right, and here I'm just going to go through the whole aperture range of this lens, pausing briefly at each stop. And I have a 300% zoomed in image here on the right. That's just like the Felix light and the string lights. Here's just a test where I toggle between the wide open and just out of wide open at T2.8. And same stuff going on as last week's test on the 28 millimeter here. The real difference is just that little extra bloom the flare gives off when it's wide open. Again, with that tiny, tiny bit of full spectrum flare, AKA a rainbow. And finally here, I just killed some of the other lights and panned this Felix light around to help isolate that lens flare in this image and really see like just what that is doing. All right, y'all, so just like that, that is pretty much gonna wrap up this physical overview and lens test of this 40 millimeter T2 1.8X anamorphic prime for RF mount. Let me know in the comments section what you would do with an RF anamorphic prime lens set. Would you put it on the Red Komodo, the C70, an EOS R5, R6, R3, something like that? Would you just scratch your head and send it back? I don't know, let me know in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, if you happen to like this video, you know what to do by now. How long has YouTube been around? Hit that little thumbs up button. That's going to let me know that you liked this video. It's gonna let YouTube know that you liked that video. It's gonna help bump this video up in ye old algorithm there. So every single like helps. Also, if you are not subscribed, 
what the heck are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. We are rocketing towards that 100,000 subscriber milestone. So every single sub helps. If you are subscribed, you're the coolest. You can also hit that little bell button that's next to the subscribe button. That's gonna keep you in the loop whenever we post new content. So people, take care and don't get caught up on superficial things like lens barrel design. And we'll see you in the next one.